just dropping in and out and have a truly shared and collaborative experience. To me, that's the big takeaway. Just as the internet became a hit through uses its inventors didn't imagine, I think siftables are flexible and sophisticated enough to find uses nobody's even thinking about today. It's like that with all these technologies. They're not just end products. They're starting points that can take us anywhere. Back in Tokyo, a team of researchers is figuring out somewhere else to take us. They call it augmented reality. Augmented reality is a sort of reality plus, an addition or enhancement to what we know is physical reality. This is a prototype system, okay. and our final goal is to display the 3D building on that 2D map. Oh, all right. Kind of like Google yeah. Maps, where it shows the 3D renderings of the buildings, yes. but sitting on top of paper. Yes. But there's more than one way to augment reality. Right across the table, Professor Hachi shows me a t-shirt. It's not my style, but there's more to it than meets the eye. When Hachi turns it towards his webcam, a little green dinosaur appears out of nowhere. His computer is running an advanced image processing program that's able to recognize shapes and pictures even when it sees them from off angles or in bad lighting. In the next few years, these smart cams could be everywhere, looking out for stuff you're wearing. That sounds more like the future of advertising. Programmable billboards selling you stuff as you walk down the street, but it could also open new possibilities for citywide games. Imagine what Frank and Kevin could do with this technology. But that's just the tip of the augmented reality iceberg. Next, a whole new take on air guitar, complete with phantom fingers. The future of the old. This morning, I'm on a Tokyo subway train packed with commuters. But my trip is less about work and more about play and what the future has in store. I'm headed for the Mixed Reality Lab at Keio University. I see you, a TV screen, a guitar. What's going on? We use the opportunity to help the guitar player to practice for themselves. So you're so, going to teach me how to play the guitar? Yes, right. Yeah, you just use a camera to, to... Whoa! Out of nowhere, ghostly computer hands appear superimposed over the image of the guitar. Spooky. Here, instead of you stepping into the computer world, the computer is reaching out to the physical world to help you learn to play. So it shows you exactly where to put your fingers. Yes, exactly. And this also learned in real time, so... That's Music. Okay. Like, I will show you some of the music. Please do. Please do. I want to see you play this guitar. One, two, Very much a Japanese three. song. <laughs> you see, like, the virtual figure model onto the skin, like, to help you <laughs> how to hold the guitar. The motion tracking cyber fingers show Ned where to put his physical fingers on the neck of the guitar. This is not rock band. <laughs> Oh, man. This is what we are working on. What? <laughs> OK. Why are you trying to get rid of music teachers? Hey. Ah, you don't have a good <laughs> answer to that one. Did you have a bad music teacher in your childhood? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I'm not really sure if Ned gets my joke, but he's decent enough to laugh anyway. Before I give it a go, I need Ned to spill the beans on how this technology works. And is this a special guitar? Is it plugged into something I can't see? Normal guitar. So you took a normal guitar, yes, exactly. a normal human hand. Yes. The way Ned explains it, he and his colleagues have created an interface where they attach a piece of cardboard with special markers to the neck of the instrument. The camera records and sends this image to the software they created. The software tracks the marker and uses that information to keep the digital computer fingers over the neck of the real guitar as it wiggles a bit up and down in space. You guys have anticipated and built for the fact that the guitar, people, it wiggles, people move up and yes, down. Exactly. And your hand tracking system stays on their hand. Yes. But it's just a piece of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. This ghost in the guitar application is an intuitive and easy way to learn an age-old musical instrument. Let's see if it works on me. Yeah. All right, oh, yeah. switch places then. 
Oops. Yes, exactly like this one. It's destroying Ned to hear me butcher one of Japan's most famous melodies. But I guess there's no substitute for a little practice. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much, dude. Yep. I am Bob Dylan now. The times really are changing. The reality is, or more specifically, the physical reality is, this kind of technology will only help turn more kids on to trying out a new instrument. Hey, maybe a 30-something blogger will get his start on Ned's augmented reality guitar teacher. Or we'll learn yoga or chess or even cooking with the help of our augmented reality instructor. All exploration into the future of play suggests a change in our relationship with computers. Instead of hunching over them to work, we can craft them to stimulate, fascinate, liberate us with a universe of new experiences. In the beginning, man created the computer, and we tried to shove all our activity into a box. We're limited by keyboards and mice and glowing rectangles we call screens. Well, the future of play is going to liberate us from a lot of those constraints. We'll physically grab pieces of technology. We'll run our real bodies through virtual environments. We'll feel the impact of computer-generated blows. We'll get better at the sports we know and love through the help of computers and technology. We're going to take the best of the virtual and real worlds and remix them into a world that's more improvised, more immersive, more social. That's a future I'm looking forward to. That's the future of play.